and welcome back to the She Shed. I just wanted to run through with you one of the projects I'm doing and I'm super excited about it. I just wanted to show you what I'm up to and run you through one of the spins. And what I am doing is a large, it's hard to get it in the camera, a large throw with natural coloured wools. It's beautiful. So these are two natural coloured wools that I have here, but they're what we call humbug. So they're white and brown and uh, grey or black and white. So one is called Jacob and the other one is called Finn. So let's get closer and um, take you through the process. So here's a close up on what I'm working on at the moment. So, here we go. Now this will end up being a large throw. It is from my hand spun wool and I'm going to take you through the whole process of how I get uh, my, my roving spun to get these gorgeous colours and then um, making this. So I have at this precise moment run out of um, wool to continue crocheting so you can see my my end there there we go that's it I've got to spin some more so perfect opportunity to run through how I go about spinning now the two wools that I am using um, and I'm blending together to get this these beautiful colors in this throw and they're all natural these are not dyed at all these are natural wools and I must admit I absolutely love natural wools colors I love colors I do love colors but when it is natural wool you can't beat it because you can't predict how it's going to come out it's just natural so the anywhere where you can see the brown that is fin and anywhere where you see the gray or black that is Jacob now how it comes and I will show you the roving um, in a minute uh, how it comes is the black and white and how you pull it apart and get the effects is purely up to you and so you just never know how it's going to come out so sometimes you might get a whole block of just one color so block of the brown there, block of some white, I did have some white somewhere, but you can see what I mean, you just don't know where the colour is going to come out and that's what I absolutely love about this. You, I don't know where my Jacob's going to come out, I don't know where my Finn's going to come out, it just, it, it just comes out the way it does and it's just stunning. It's the first time I've ever done it like this, normally I just spin up the one lot of colour. Um, so this is really nice how it's come out. Um, and it'll be great for a throw. Now that's obviously a throw doesn't necessarily have to warm you up. Obviously here in Australia we don't get much cold weather. Uh, so a throw can be simply thrown over your couch and just look awesome. And I reckon this will look stunning over any chair or bed. So let me show you the roving. So these are um, some roving. I've split it up into um, bits because I don't do it all at the same time. It's not going to fit on my bobbin. So I break it up into bits. So this is uh, 50 grams of the Jacob Humbug and 50 grams of the Finn Humbug. And I really do wish there was um, touch of vision and they feel so nice and smell a vision because they smell like sheep they smell, and if you don't like sheep I'm really sorry but I, I really like the smell of wool I love pure fiber um, so alpaca especially baby alpaca that's so so soft sheep um, obviously there are some sheep out there that aren't as um, soft as others so the Jacob is a um, a bit coarser this is, this is nowhere near as soft as the fin these aren't overly soft yarns uh, so it's not a merino grade or anything like that but they still spin up beautifully 
uh, to make so what we're, I'm already working on. So these two are going to make this, continue with this. So let's get spinning. So I always um, split up my yarn uh, before, my, sorry, my roving before I start um, spinning. So I've got my two, two lengths, one, two, and I'm going to split them evenly between each other. So what I do is I'll, I'll um, split off some of this and then 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 this until they're all gone. Um, so how much of each? Don't really mind. Um, it just, I try and be as even as possible. Um, but then when I'm picking it out of my box, so I'm going to put it in my box. And when I'm picking it out of my box, I might change up the pattern again. So just because of what I've pulled apart here does not mean it's going to be what ends up being spun on here. Okay, so let's get splitting. I must confess I thought I was videoing me splitting up my roving and apparently I wasn't and my phone just turned off so I have split up a lot I'm up my last bits I will show you my last bits of splitting up my yarn my roving sorry um, you don't have to do this you can spin straight from the roving, I personally find that really, really difficult. Um, don't know why, I just do. Um, so I don't do it like that. I find when I found this technique, um, the way I do it, because I find for me personally, I get a way more consistent, even yarn. Um, I've got to the stage now where I can pretty much look at the uh, roving that I've split up and go, yep, that's going to make me a four millimeter hook ply yarn. <laughs> um, I don't want to go thinner than that because I don't like using any hook that is lower than four. Um, I find um, it really hard to actually spin higher than that. So. Um, yeah, so I seem to spin all the time at a four, four millimeter hook size. I have no idea what kind of weight or what that would be called um, in your world. I would not know, um, but I use a four millimeter hook for all my uh, yarn, my hand spun yarn. And um, anybody who buys my hand spun yarn, I actually um, recommend to them that they use a four millimeter hook. Now you might have noticed that I've tried to split some of this yarn up, uh, sorry, this um, roving up into strips of black, strips of white, and sometimes multicolored, like this one's going to come out black, white, black, white, black, white, because I want that varied effect throughout the uh, throat. I think I'm on my last piece here. Now the Jacob was really, really easy to pull apart this time and my fin was really awful to pull apart this time. I do not know why. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm in a bit of a mess with this today. Got little bits everywhere which is quite frustrating because that then means you have to stop start all the time but anyway last bit done okay so here is 
all my can you see there all my um my snakes all right let's get spinning okay so let's get the wheel set up so this is my one and only wheel my um the life of me I've forgotten what it's called <laughs> it's a traveler wheel um, I looked it up not that long ago and it's about it was made in the 1980s um, it is the wheel the only wheel I own and it is just setting my tension so this little knob here turn it up and down it sets the spring on the other side which sorry you can't see at the moment uh, turn it up and down and it sets the tension uh, the tension comes through here onto the wheel here and I've got a drive band over here which sits on my bobbin and spins that which spins the fly which gets the yarn on there it has one pedal often wonder what a two pedaled wheel would be like because obviously only one only one foot is doing all the work my little hook to get my leader through and there we go ready to go so let's get spinning and my first one is going to be Finn so get it started now I always um, roll it on first if I start pressing the foot without rolling it on it won't take it up for some reason all right to use it to continue on with the throw. I've been using half double crochet for this throw. That's the stitch I'm using. I use a four millimeter hook and I've used 165 stitches width in my chains and then just keep going up until I've run out of yarn. Uh, there is a hundred grams of roving in to make this. This makes around about 200 meters. I use about a kilogram of roving to make a large throw. And um, yeah, so I just keep going until it's all run out and I've finished, oops, and I've finished making uh, the throw. Now if there's any, um, if you've been to my Facebook shop and you've seen any of the throws or the shawls that I make there and you're interested in knowing how I do those, please ask me. Um, there'll be a link below to it, lead you to the shop and see if there's anything that you're interested there. 
um, if there's anything um, any colors that you quite like um, let me know alrighty well take care everybody and thank you very much for watching and um, have a fantastic day see you next time